and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So a while ago, I made a video showcasing a really interesting problem, this one. So here the sphere looks perfectly normal, then after a while it becomes a little bit wonky, and then slowly becomes a lot more messed up, until it gets to a point where basically it's completely unrecognizable as an actual sphere. So this here is an issue with floating points. It's an issue where you have simultaneously super large objects and super tiny objects. Go watch that entire video to see the entire explanation on what exactly is going on here. So in there I mentioned how one solution is a floating origin point. That's where you teleport things back in order to make sure everything does not go too far away from the origin. But there's actually another way to solve this problem. Specifically, there's a really clever way that one game solved it. Basically, one issue with that solution, the floating origin point method, that one is how you can only move the entire world around. So it basically won't help if you need to have two objects that are supposed to be really far apart from one another. Like for example, having the player spaceship on 000, then a planet all the way over there, another one all the way over there. If we want these two to be really far apart, then we can't really just move the origin. So here is the game Ixion. It's a really awesome space game on a huge scale. It's a city builder strategy survival game. By the way, this game has a massive scale in terms of total number of units. And the way they managed to make all that work, the way they did that is by using dots. This is a tool that Unity has that can get you some extreme performance, literally over 200x faster code. That's insane. If you want to learn how to use Unity Dots to get that really extreme performance, if so, then check out my free Dots course. It will teach you how to use this really awesome, super powerful tool, whilst also making a really cool RTS game. Although keep in mind, this is an intermediate to advanced course. Dots is not for beginners. If you are a beginner, then don't worry about Dots at all, just stick with regular game objects. But if you are at least on the intermediate stage, then I definitely recommend you learn about Dots. It is a super powerful tool, definitely a great addition to your game dev toolbox. So check it out in the link in the description. There's a commonly free 7 hour video, or you can pick up the full 17 hour course. So here's the game Ixion. It's a space game on a huge scale, but this one is also a city builder, meaning that while the space itself, while it's huge, it also has some really tiny people walking around everywhere. So basically it's a game that requires massive scale on both sides. It needs giant numbers to store all those giant planets, and then also need some really tiny numbers of all the tiny small people walking around on those planets. So this is exactly the kind of game where the floating point problem is a very serious issue, and also the kind of problem where the floating origin point, that one, that solution, will simply not work. So the way they end up solving this is actually quite clever. They talked about it on a deep dive video with Unity. By the way, I really love these deep dives. They've made tons of them, and I've certainly learned a bunch of clever things myself from many of them. I would love to do some more videos highlighting some of the clever solutions like this one that I've seen. If you want to see the whole video, it's linked in the description. The part where they talk about this specific problem is around 23 minutes. And so to come back to the rendering system of the solar system, we, are, uh, we use uh, dynamic scaling. I mean by that, uh, we, we cheated the position and the scale of the large object to use only one camera. So uh, our small uh, tycoon is uh, really small at the, at the center of the universe, but the objects are moving around him. So uh, when the tycoon moves, he stays at uh, 0 .0 .0, uh, 0.0.0 in terms of coordinates. So in here, he mentions two specific things. So number one is how the spaceship does not actually move. It just stays on 0, 0, 0, and basically only the rest of the world, the planets, only those move around it. So that basically solves one issue. This way it makes sure that the ship itself will never actually get broken. But of course, the planets and all the units that exist on those planets, those can still be broken. So the second really clever solution is actually quite simple. But the, the planet will scale. We, uh, we simulate a scale to, uh, to make the planet bigger or smaller. And, uh, oh, uh, and so uh, they're not them. really they're not really so far away from the users. You keep them close by to the camera, which yeah. are the center of the scene, and you basically act on the size of the planet as opposed to move it far away. Exactly. That's really uh, smart. Are, when things are going very far, instead of actually going further out, they just become smaller. So if you want to simulate something getting further and further out, instead of actually moving it, instead of actually moving it further away. Doing that would lead to huge numbers, which would cause all these problems. So instead of moving it further away, we can just make it smaller and smaller. From the point of view of the player, it looks exactly the same. It looks like the planet is actually going further out, but since the object isn't really moving in terms of position, it won't actually cause that floating point issue. So that's a really clever solution that they came up with. Instead of moving those planets way far out, they just move them a little bit and then just scale them. If you mix both the distance and the scale, you can achieve the illusion of having some super huge worlds, while not actually using some super huge numbers. So now you know two possible solutions to this interesting floating point problem. First is what I mentioned in the other video, the floating origin point, that one really solves most problems. But if you want a world that has multiple objects and those objects are really far apart, 
If so, then instead of that, you can use this really clever trick. Just move the objects a little bit and then just scale them down in order to give the illusion they are getting further away. Now, if you like how this game looks and you want to build something like it, then I highly recommend you learn about Unity Dots. This is the awesome tech that can help you write code that runs literally 200x faster, it's insane. It is not for beginners, but as long as you're in the intermediate level, if so, then I highly recommend you learn about it. You can go watch my free Dots course right here, right now, to start learning about this awesome toolset. And do you know how this game made $28 million, apparently without polish? Or here's some nice quick tips on optimization. Have you heard about some interesting Valve hardware leaks? Or do you know how many sales you might get from 10 million YouTube views? I covered all of these topics and more in my weekly Game Dev Report newsletter. Check the link in the description and sign up for free. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.